Race is a powerful and challenging concept. It affects our lives in ways that are sometimes obvious and sometimes practically invisible. When, where, why, and how did conceptions of race come into being? These are the questions driving Seeing Race Before Race, an exhibition developed in collaboration with Race Before Race, a professional community that centers the expertise and experiences of scholars of color researching race from the ancient world through the 18th century. Race emerged as people tried to make sense of themselves and their place in the world using categories of difference that went well beyond skin color. In this manuscript, for example, medieval artists marked the wise man in red as foreign through his clothing, turban-like crown, and dark beard. Representations and descriptions of these differences were repeated and refined in thousands of books, objects, and artworks that reached audiences throughout the world. Over time, they created widely shared assumptions about different groups of people, and those assumptions could be used by those in power to give certain communities legal, social, and economic advantages over others. Race-making could be used to claim and wield wealth and power. From the end of the 15th century onwards, it was increasingly used by Europeans who were expanding across the world through colonization. Race-making was essential in this process, something an Ottoman Turkish artist recognized when he painted this image of light and dark-skinned individuals standing before the Potosi silver mine in present-day Bolivia, a mine which operated with enslaved labor. Europeans also put race-making to work in maps, which described unfamiliar lands and the people who lived there in ways that justified European claims to own and exploit them. Making race also changed how people acted in the world. Due to colonization, Europeans learned not only how to behave according to their evolving beliefs about race, but also how to ascribe cultural value and power to different behaviors. Racial identities became linked to certain activities. One 17th century author heavily criticized Shakespeare's Othello because the play gave the black title character a name and cast him as a military general with command over white Europeans. Another anonymous author tried to shame English women who wore cosmetics that might mask their whiteness and make them appear mixed race. Over time, the race-making that constantly occurred in books, maps, and art before 1800 not only helped create a system of power that controlled access to resources based on physical, religious, or cultural differences, but it also made it seem like that system was, quite simply, how the world worked. After 1800, scientists named this apparently natural phenomenon race. And over the next century, that concept was used to justify the legal oppression of people of color throughout the world. But there never was anything natural about race. Many Africans, indigenous people, European reformers, and religious minorities recognized the violence of race-making before 1800, and they resisted. This bureaucratic report about the English colony of Barbados speaks of natives and escaped enslaved people who physically fought back against the English colonizers. Indigenous Nahua farmers in what is now central Mexico use their own traditional mapping techniques to create this map, which successfully protected their land and food sources in a legal case against Spanish ranchers. The long history of race can be difficult to see, but as this exhibition shows, it runs deep. We can see it in these material witnesses of the medieval and the early modern past. If we take the time to understand that history, how race was made and how it has evolved and changed, and the time to consider how its legacy and consequences affect us today, we can more clearly imagine and create a more just and equitable world.